This video is brought to you by Raycon. So I like sound. I'm pretty sure you do as well. For the longest time, I was one of those people using cheap earbuds that seem to be designed to get tangled so they break faster, sending you into a never-ending buying spiral, but no more, because I am now the proud owner of Raycon's Everyday E25 earbuds. With their noise, isolating fit, and powerful bass, I can tune out the world all while not being hindered by disgusting wires. They're comfortable, secure, and top quality despite only being about half the price of competitors, which is great for those of us who like money, which I'm assuming you do. Head over to buyraycon.com slash rainbot to get 15% off your order, or you can just click the link down below instead of typing. Again, click the link down below or head to buyraycon.com slash rainbot to get 15% off. Thank you, Raycon, for supporting the channel and independent content alike. And with that said, on to the episode. If you're a regular on this channel, then you're no stranger to unfiction or online horror in general being played out on social networks. There are times when this medium can become tiresome, especially when overly drawn out across several different platforms. But lucky for us, tonight's topic of discussion is not only straightforward, but as of right now, unfolds in a singular venue. We'll dive into an analysis of the story and theories as to what's going on here, but first, allow me to tell you exactly what went down. This is the haunting story of TikTok user Face the Light. On the night of November 27th of 2019, three sisters were left home alone. To kill time, they decided to play a game of hide and seek, specifically with the lights off. Eventually, one of the sisters finds herself alone, frustrated that her siblings won't stop the game. Then she receives a text message. One of my sisters made a fake number and is texting me saying, that they're gone and that there's someone in the house and i know it's them but i'm just like really scared because i don't like that kind of stuff okay i'm like stop that's not funny mia get out of here right now get in the kitchen mia i'm done i hate this i hate it i hate it stop there it is again let's go see if it's mia or let mia i know that's you Oh, is that? <gasps> oh, is that? <gasps> At this point, it's become apparent that something has gone wrong. As for what exactly, no one at this point knows. What we do know, however, is that someone is watching this girl from afar, and based on the knocking, they want in. Guys, I don't think Mia and Lex are here anymore. I don't know what happened to them if they left but that was not them at the door i don't know who it was but they all my doors are locked <gasps> in the next clip the girl claims to be in an elevator one that locks she tells us with tears in her eyes that she has no idea what chased her in there she also based on her wording doesn't seem to think that it's human i'm deciding to go to the basement there's a back door that i can um, run out of and hopefully run to something because I don't know what's in here, but I know something is and it's not one of my sisters. <laughs> this is the final clip posted from this date. The next one comes to us the next day, November 28th, possibly around midnight. The girl is now seemingly bound, tied to a post, and slightly bloody. She cries out, and whatever is there with her can be heard via its deep growls. After this point, the account went dark. That is, until December 8th, about a week later. This is what was posted. This was the final post from 2019, and anyone following the account at this point was in for a very, very long cliffhanger. In fact, the account didn't make a reappearance until March 2020. Somehow, the girl seems to be just fine and posts several short clips addressed directly at her mother, the first of which informs us how she's now living in Ohio with someone named Eli, who's out working. This person, we can assume, is most likely her partner. In the middle of all this, 
we hear a familiar sound. Maybe when I'm done with it, I can send you this. Um, Mom, I gotta go. Love you. Bye. I think maybe my book fell off of my shelf, but who knows? Um, I just wanted to show you my room. This is the bedding I got. This is the duvet that I grabbed from the house. Um, there's all my books that I could not fit on that shelf. <gasps> hey, Mom, as you probably saw in the last video, some really weird stuff has been happening around here. Like, I keep hearing like random noises. Anyways, on a lighter note, I wanted to show you the kitchen. Um, there's the oven. It's kind of whack, but I put the nice towel that you sent me. Thank you. Um. Despite her attempts to ignore things, it's pretty obvious at this point what's happening. The next few clips, at least at the time of writing this, are the last posts made from the Face the Light account, and at the moment, we find ourselves at yet another cliffhanger. The girl, now weeping, tells her mother that she thinks it's back, and that the power had gone out. Then, two eyes, two familiar eyes, can be seen staring through the door. The same thing happens in the next clip, but this time from another room. The knocking continues, with whatever's out there trying to get in like it did last time. The girl makes one last dash for safety, attempting to hide in the upstairs closet before this happens. If you've made it this far, then you're probably interested in where this narrative is going and what its creators were trying to say. The most glaring question, of course, is what the heck this thing is. Based on the lightened up footage, whatever it is does appear to be humanoid, but the glowing eyes would imply otherwise. On top of that, there is the growling noise that it seems to always make when you're close enough to hear it. Right now, this series seems to be in the phase where things are still being built up and established. It could even be still in its first arc. So right now, there probably isn't any solid way to know exactly what this thing is. Personally, though, when I first watched this through, it reminded me of an old folktale growing up. These days, there are tons of creepypastas about the dangers of hide-and-seek at night or playing hide-and-seek alone. But before creepypastas ever even existed, I was being told not to play the game at night lest I be taken away by supernatural creatures. I should note that this was way out in the Philippines and the folklore there has obviously no direct correlation to this American tale, but similar accounts appear in pretty much every culture. Stories made to scare children into behaving or not running off while it's dark. Having said that, it could be possible that within this story's universe, whatever this was, was summoned by the sisters playing their game of hide-and-seek. They just weren't aware of it at the time. Now, depending on your interpretation, you could say that this thing isn't the only one out there, or at least not the only thing antagonizing our main character. In the first video posted, the girl mentions being texted by a number saying that her sisters were gone and that someone's in the house. Directly after this, we see something outside the home. This, of course, begs the question of why this thing would feel the need to send a text message and say it's inside when it isn't, unless, of course, someone else was involved and they were the one already inside. This whole thing came up once I watched the last video as well, the one where our main character is hiding in the closet. As you can see, something opens the door. At first, I thought it might have been the girl doing it herself, but that obviously doesn't make much sense given her reaction. It also doesn't seem to be the glowy-eyed creature given how far away it is right now. At the start of this video, I mentioned how straightforward the story is, but that might not be entirely true if you think about it. Aside from the possibility that there might be more than one thing hunting this girl, I also want to point this out. Who's filming? Because it clearly isn't her. Who uploaded this clip to the internet? The entire last portion of this account also seems a bit off, and here's why. 
Keep in mind, the main character seems to have posted every encounter she documented onto TikTok, presumably so that the public could see what she was enduring. In the last videos, however, she addresses them to her mother, not her viewers. It almost seems as though these were meant to be private, and if so, how do they end up online? What I'm trying to get at is, it's possible that the TikTok account actually has nothing to do with our main character. In universe, she may not even know this is all public. If you head over to this user's profile, this is what it looks like. Note the picture. It seems to imply that the girl in question either never did or no longer runs this page. Either way, we're left to wonder where she is now. It's been weeks since the last post, and no one knows what's coming next. Where are Mia and Lex, the two supposedly missing sisters? Were they ever found, and how exactly did this girl manage to escape the first time around? It seems to be heavily implied that the aforementioned gap in posting was due to a major move. If you'll recall, one from California all the way to Ohio. Presumably to get a fresh start after the events of late 2019. Somehow though, this thing or things still managed to follow her. How? Right now, I have no idea, but let's hope the answers to that and more are revealed as this series continues. Definitely check out her account for yourself, give it a follow, and with that all said, it's time to thank the patrons. T. Gorman, Connor H., Andrew L., Daniel G., Base of Shadow, Joel H., Guillerme M., Eric H., Lance, Esper Nix, Nick B., Krista S., Keith Z., Benjamin M., Scorian S., Amelia J., Michael R., Bloody the Elf, L. Brown, Anthony M., Jeremy R., S. Estrada, Zarai, Borealis Knight, Ruben M., Tracy T., Isaac M., Matt J., and Kanan T. Thank you all for the support, and thank all of you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.